Yeah, I think if you go back uh, in uh, early 80s or 2000 and recent 2008, every era has given different out of look uh, for work the way we do, right? Mm. From where my banking is coming, who is operating behind that? And we could see many more gaps because of these things, uh, many more fraud we see around. Yeah. We could see that various uh, uh, cases where banks went down or various cases where government want to see or bank want to see who is my customer, who mm. is my citizen. Hello everyone, welcome to the GB show. As I promised in my last episode that we are going to talk amazing technologies in our upcoming episodes. So today I have with me Mr. Prasanna Lohar. He is CEO of Blockstack and founder of India Blockchain Forum. He is also Chief Innovative Officer at PayCircle. And with him, I am going to talk about banking and blockchain. Hey Prasanna, welcome to the GB show. Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks for giving us your precious time. And uh, so everyone, so Prasanna has uh, 23 years of experience in banking and he's now founder of uh, a blockchain startup. So Prasanna, how the marriage of these two things, banking and blockchain has happened and uh, how you see the future uh, in this? Yeah, I think if you go back uh, in uh, early 80s or 2000, and recent 2008, every era has given different out of look uh, for work the way we do. Uh, coming back to my career, I was serving most of the banks in India uh, from 2008 till 2014 as a service mm -hmm. provider, which was like serving all banks sitting outside. Uh, with my DCB bank experience, I served bank within a, within sitting in a bank as a digital head or a mm -hmm. chief innovation officer. Uh, while we do this journey, we could see that last couple of years, some of those emerging technologies like AI, blockchain and 5G is coming up. Certainly, this combination of technology is going to change the way we do, change the way we do banking and many more other aspects. And that moment, we always look back. What is that we can give back to the society and typically in the banking industry? While sitting in the bank, I have worked. While sitting outside of the bank, I have worked. But whatever I was not able to do for the banking or that delta enhancement, which with the help of these emerging technologies and primarily on blockchain, that is what I have chosen uh, rest of my career. That is why we started this journey at the Blockstack and India Blockchain Forum, looking at how can we create a path breaking operations mm -hmm. and various ecosystems, which will help uh, future banking uh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, amazing. And uh, how you see blockchain and banking in uh, 2025? Because a lot of things and a lot, lot of emerging technologies are coming in. Most of the people are talking about AI today. But do you think that will be the case of blockchain in three years down the line? Yeah, I think uh, when you look back again, 95 or back in 55, uh, the network concept was always mm. there. And internet being one of those foundation technology and we have seen magic of internet last 20, 25 years, where most of the business model have transformed from brick and mortar to internet now. Okay. Imagine we used to go to the grocery shop. Now we have uh, some of those blink kit and many more apps you can order. Similarly goes for ordering food. Why not banking on a phone, which mm. is typically has happened with the help of a internet being foundation technology. Now, while we are uh, doing a lot of operations, many more things on internet, internet doesn't solve a thing called as a trust, right? Mm. From where my banking is coming, who is operating behind that? And we could see many more gaps because of these things, uh, many more fraud we see around. Yeah. We could see that various uh, uh, cases where banks went down or various cases where government want to see or bank want to see who is my customer, who mm. is my citizen. And the other side, citizens, customer want to see, is it really good bank or is it really good government? So this trust deficit is still there in the internet era. Okay. So blockchain is another foundation technology and comes and says that internet is there good, but I'll bring on this additional trust layer and okay. will enhance every other operation which we have built on internet. Imagine down the line, three, four years, whatever we are not able to do. Mm. Example, let's say example of account opening. Uh, we have seen account opening or a KYC coming in mm. through RBI early 2000 years. Okay. And after that, we have seen e-KYC, mm. we have seen uh, uh, video KYC. With Aadhaar, we have an immediate KYC available for banking as well as we are able to open account immediately. Still, it is on internet, right? Example, if I'm opening my account with a, a bank A, uh, and suppose that customer is not happy with the bank A, he will go to the bank B. Imagine it takes 5,000 to 10,000 rupees to open one bank account. Mm. 
Mm. And moreover, we don't know whether he's going to be our primary customer. That is, is on the internet. Yeah. Now, blockchain come into picture. What it will do? Open a bank account once with one bank. That KYC can be immediately shared to another regulated entities on the same chain. Okay. So, you, get, you are able to save a lot of uh, cost for mm. a banking ecosystem with one use case. Now, imagine if I bring 50 more other use cases mm. like reporting of a fraud. Many more operations are there within a banking which is inter-bank or depend upon regulator where more than two, three stakeholders are involved. And imagine everything goes on blockchain, we'll be able to save a lot of things, we'll be able to save a lot of uh, uh, operational cost, many more other areas, right? So I think that's how down the line, when we say it's a foundation technology, it doesn't come with a immediate uh, uh, hmm. uh, impact. It comes with its own impact. And gradually the way we have seen pace of uh, uh, research and adoption of blockchain is huge. So I think in the next three to four years, trade finance, mm -hmm. uh, digital currency, KYC, which are a lot of operation consuming uh, 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 business models will typically will be solved. But it will take its own time. We have to do it aligned with the regulations. Yeah. But banking the way we see today is has some gaps yeah. which will be enhanced with the help of a blockchain and the other uh, peripheral technology. I think I would like to take that word of trust uh, deficiency which we have because we have seen across the frauds are uh, you know increasing and I think when we are giving our money to the bank, that is something which we expect, you know, uh, that the, our money is safe, right? So, what is uh, any uh, implemented, uh, you know, uh, use case which has been already working on, which has started and which will help us to, you know, safeguard from these frauds? Uh, there are many if we see today, right? Yeah, I think the way today's uh, Web 2.0 operates, where mm. we have a client server. Mm. Where uh, uh, on a client side, you can have a web app, mobile app, app uh, many more other interfaces. And in the back end, you have a uh, centralized service backed by some RDBMS. And you never know who is going to manage that. Mm. Is he, uh, are, are those banks manipulating it or you don't mm. have that uh, trust as an end user. Now imagine uh, the way payment happens, example, where a transaction is happening on a point of sale or okay. e-commerce website. For end user, it's an immediate impact they will get mm. a receipt or a message, the transaction happen on UPI. But in the back end, the transaction routes from the, that particular acquiring merchant to the trusted ecosystem, so-called MasterCard, Visa or mm. NPCI. And then in the back end, your bank's server and then actual core banking, right? Imagine this much we have invested. Tomorrow, with the help of a blockchain, you do not need so much of investment. Okay. It's just a, one of those nodes of a one trusted system, another node of a one bank, another node within your uh, point of sale. You will be able to save a lot of cost the mm. way we have built. So definitely, uh, the way blockchain works, it doesn't require a so-called reconciliation settlement where the merchant will be paid on the T plus one mm. or a T plus two. It will happen instantaneously on okay. the spot. So mer merchant and uh, end user can always trust this will happen. And if it doesn't happen, transaction will not go through. Frauds, etc., which is happening in the mm. UPI, IMPS, NFT, because this is a disconnected architecture. The mm. transition is hopping from uh, end uh, devices to the intermediate servers and multiple other stakeholders, where you have a manual angle of a reconciliation settlement. Mm. On blockchain, it is a seamless. You do not, you will not see any man in between. Okay. Transition will go through and it will, or it will not go through. So imagine so how many frauds has happened in the past, right? And why it has happened. And say, if you bring blockchain, immediately those reasons will be nullified. So that's the context. Blockchain is a foundational tech will remove many of those controls which you have created, okay. right? Uh, that's how... And, and I, if, yeah. I, if I'm not wrong, so we are talking here about the changing the whole ecosystem of the banks, Absolutely. where banks start today. That's the foundational thing will be changing, right? Yes. And for that, I think we require a lot of government support and uh, the regulatory support. So what do you think in India, RBI or government? Uh, they are in favor of this or any steps has been taken in this direction? Yeah, I think if you look at other countries, example, mm. China has implemented more than 500 plus use cases on blockchain, okay. government and banking and so on, including their digital currency. Mm. Estonia is a one small country acts as a template for other countries to how to implement blockchain, starting from COE, national strategy and many more other. There are 290 plus use cases on blockchain. Likewise, there are many countries who are following various... Uh, uh, use cases on the blockchain per se where trust is required. In India also, uh, uh, national strategy of uh, blockchain came in mm -hmm. uh, back in 2019, okay. uh, well supported by METI. Uh, we have uh, various uh, larger projects which are coming with the help of a government. Uh, uh, considering regulator and uh, banking regulator RBI, they have a separate unit called as a fintech unit, which primarily works on how they can adopt many more emerging technologies. 
they have ran more than um, uh, five to six cohorts with the startups and some of them are on a blockchain. The recent okay. Harbinger is an example where are looking forward for solution of interoperability, scalability of blockchain. So RBI and RBI is another company which is RBI Innovation Hub. Okay. Where they have done a couple of rather three use cases with the uh, with, uh, banks, uh, LCBG, interoperability. Uh, so I think these are good efforts and if you see other, uh, other arms of a uh, RBI like NPCI, they are creating complete blockchain platform. They hmm. did Vajra to remove reconciliation angle. And on top of that, they are building uh, 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 next level of payment ecosystem. Okay. IDRBT is working on 5G and blockchain use cases. Uh, you talk about NIBM, which is the educational arm of uh, uh, RBI. They have started conducting courses and uh, uh, for all the bankers since 2018, right? Okay. Back in uh, five years before. IFSCA which is another unilateral regulator and a web 3 which is the next year of web 2 they run a lot of cohorts uh, with uh, national banks as well as a uh, international bank so that we have yeah. a good support for our startup internationally so i think huge thing is happening at a regulator at a state levels if you see uh, maharashtra government has done some use cases on a caste certificate or a west bengal every birth hmm. uh, is recorded in a blockchain as a uh, Telangana state, they are looking for a land registration, where is again trust yeah, yeah, is required. Yeah. Tamil Nadu tried for elections, voting system on blockchain. Okay. And there are other states who are looking forward for uh, like Rajasthan or Kerala, they have done mm. some crop insurance use cases. Andhra was one of those prominent states back in 2017 uh, to adopt uh, or to do some experimentations on the blockchain. But I think right now, many IS officer state know how to adapt. So, government angle, regulator angle, and even academy angle. Uh, uh, you will not be surprised. I think uh, certificates, I, even yeah. we are using at cyber threat yeah. to give a certificate on the blockchain Absolutely. level. No, so but uh, uh, courses, how uh. do we create the skill set? Uh. IIMs, IITs, various MBA colleges, they are starting blockchain business as well as mm. engineering. So, I think what support is required for any technology from all the pillars of ecosystem from government, corporates, academia, influencers, innovators, it's happening. And the pace is quite huge. And yeah. you think right now we lack in that uh, support function and the skill set which required for this. That is where Academia comes into. Yeah, right? so I think we, I cannot say lack, but it's an opportunity. opportunity and yeah. the way we have seen internet is brought in many roles like yeah. uh, web developer yeah. or DB developer, designers. Similarly, blockchain has its own uh, database architect, blockchain architect, uh, blockchain analyst, how do you identify use cases. So I think primarily the way we have to adopt uh, blockchain use cases and the demand will be there, automatically we'll go back to the academia and we'll ask them to create the skill. And best part, academia is also understanding. Mm. Uh, they are coming with a lot of uh, uh, courses. We work closely with uh, Kerala Blockchain Academy or uh, okay. Idea Labs or we work closely with a uh, Mumbai Education uh, Trust uh, business schools. And we have done a lot of, uh, at least more than 30, 40 uh, colleges we have seen, they are adopting a okay. blockchain uh, as a, as a education yeah. amazing and i think that's a really a good information for me as well and i will like to come back to the topic of blockchain and banking which we started as a end user what will change for me yeah so as a end user again a trust uh, factor as a end user as a merchant you don't have to wait for a day to mm. for uh, receiving the payment because it will ha happens instantaneously as a end user while you you may say upi is there mm. but uh, i think there are many more angles you may not understand right okay. uh, so. like land registration today or rather uh, last year when i was doing uh, land title change from my father's to me it took almost 8 months Imagine mm. it would have been on blockchain, backed by some Aadhaar, backed by various other ecosystem where all the parties who approve that uh, mm. chain instantly would have happened in 2-3 days. Okay. Right? The way we order food or the way we order insurance now, the way we do payments now, I think we have to evolve many more other operations, typically in government sector where citizens will have a lot of uh, benefit around okay. this. Yeah. What is the timeline you think? Like it's a 3 years, 5 years, 10 years where end user will start observing a there is a difference because of blockchain. Yeah, I think uh, uh, if you look at banking industry, central bank digital currency, which is uh, mm. India is working on, or uh, more than 100 plus countries are working on uh, mm. their country's uh, central uh, CBDCs, okay. uh, China or a smaller country like uh, Bahamas, mm. right? They have adopted. So I think that's the immediate uh, output which we will see for uh, end users, okay. right? Uh, apart from that, governments, uh, I have given some examples yeah, like Estonia and many others they are adopting. But like and five today, years maybe? Yeah, I think within a 
3 to 5 years you will certainly see blockchain is always part of every other ecosystem mm -hmm. we may not have to go and say let's implement blockchain inherent trust is a requirement for every individual organization so wherever it is needed uh, automatically service provider will always attach uh, the way we attach dbms mm -hmm. in, uh, in all the apps uh, ultimately so this will also go as a part of a uh, every platform okay person i think it was quite a insightful discussion maybe last message for the banking organization you want to give yeah so uh, while we have a journey at uh, blockstack where we look at how we can really transform banking experiences on a payments or lending i think there are more than 50 60 use cases where we need to look how we can transform right reporting of a fraud aml kyc syndicated loan and if you sit inside a bank with the bankers you will find many more use such use cases good to see that uh, indian uh, uh, banking uh, 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 is coming together they have started a company called ebic uh, and it is a operational uh, there are many other areas we could see the support of uh, rbi npci and india blockchain forum which is bringing lot of momentum with their uh, membership model or education model policy advocacy model which will accelerate lot of uh, journeys and certainly i think with some smaller use case to learn and the larger use case to earn that is how uh, indian banks are looking at how to add up for blockchain but the way we i am communicating and talking to many cios interest is there uh, hype is there and it is a real hype it's not some something which is not going to happen the way we see uh, new age technologies like metaverse 5g ai uh, blockchain will be always underneath to create that uh, much more required trust while we have seen internet banking mobile banking as a new business model back in early 2005 you will see metaverse banking and many more other uh, areas where your iot devices will do the banking or your cars will pay off the insurance so i think world is moving from digital to intelligent and slowly slowly towards autonomous where everything will be happen automatically but we need that trust the trust automatically will be built by blockchain either you want it or you don't want it tomorrow's customers will demand that trust so it is good to see, good to be part of a research to do some smaller use case large use case so that we are ahead of uh, uh, other global banks look at jpms or uh, 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 city bank they are already doing futuristic uh, uh, financial model so called tokenization or so called how esg will be benefited uh, uh, with the, with the blockchain i think uh, indian banks does understand rbi has a larger inclination toward that we could see rbi fintech a uh, unit rbi innovation up ebig and all the banks coming together will certainly change uh, the banking we see today and good to see that blockstack and various other such companies are part of uh, this momentum yeah oh amazing yeah, and yeah. i think a lot of uh, many use cases you have yeah, summed yeah. it up together in the last uh, few uh, words and think amazing talking to you and i think this session is going to be a amazing insightful for my audience thanks uh, Thank persona you, and yeah. i have something for you let me get you that so uh, persona uh, it was really nice talking to you thank yeah. you for giving your precious time to us and thank you everyone for watching and uh, i will see you in the uh, next episode till then take care and bye bye